So hello everyone and welcome back to another conversation of the cycle of conversations on corporeal architecture. And today for our final conversation of this semester, I am very, very glad to introduce from Brazil, our colleagues Daniela Bellini and Renata Ferreira. Daniela Bellini is the CEO of Bellini Architecture, developing work between architecture and performance art as a singer. She has a degree in neuroscience by the Pontifical Catholic University and is a specialist for design color by NCS Color Design. Her work studies how the human brain perceives and organizes visual stimuli and how the environment can influence human behavior, particularly school settings. Her work studies how buildings can best support students' wellness, increase cognitive benefits and feelings of safety. Renata Ferreira graduated in architecture and is currently finishing a specialization course in neurosciences at the Federal University of Minas Gerais. She is starting a master's program at the Federal Center for Technological Education, also in Minas Gerais, and her line of research is language, teaching, learning, and digital technology. For four years, she has been working with school architecture, serving the, serving the entire Baptist Education Network which today has 14 units spread throughout Brazil, among other schools. The objective of her research is to report on the contribution of the built space to the learning process. The hypothesis in question is that an interdisciplinary work among areas such as architecture, neuroscience, psychology, and pedagogy can help in the process of architectural design in such a way that the built space functions as a third teacher helping teachers and students in the learning process. So thank you very much, Daniela and Renata. So please go forward. Can I share my screen? Yes, just a moment. Yeah, please go ahead. Thank you. Can you see? Yes. Okay. To start, I would like to thank Marie for this wonderful, uh, to invite us for this discussion. And it's a great pleasure for us to stay here. And I would like to introduce my company. My company is Bellini Architecture. We have been working in Brazil in different states in two states, in Sao Paulo, in Minas Gerais, there I am now. And today I would like to talk about uh, the nature of architecture and fractals. Through this connection between my office and to the, the connection between my office, we, we started to, uh, to create the Institute Hava and we, do, we want to present concepts of neuroscience through a transdisciplinary approach in order to understand the real needs of the human being. Reconstruction a new relationship between body, brain, and experiencing environment. So the connection between my company, Berlin Architecture, and Renata Ferreira Company, we will start now coordinated through the Institute Hava a course for a master in a big institution in Brazil, in a Catholic institution. So for us, it's a great pleasure to stay here talking about everything that we are working in Brazil for students like yours. And we are starting to say the concept of the neuroscience for data act for architectures using neuroscience and neuroarchitecture, uh, biophilia, sensory design, all the stuff that you can see in this picture. So we will start uh, to connect as students. And you can see here Maria, <laughs> Maria Piedad Ferreira, some friends, some doctors, professors that we know here to the, uh, with the, the team number five that Maria is coordinating. So I think it's very important to us to awaken the technology with different cultures we have some guys here uh, from Mexico with Luis, uh, Chile with Pablo Redondo, Alvo Puertas from Peru, 
And uh, Julia, I don't know if she is here from Canada. And uh, Jessica, she is Brazilian but lives in Switzerland. I think it's so important to have this connection with different um, conceptions of the neuroscience in different countries. So, what we really have, want to have through the Institute is the develop of the scientific research. We don't have in Portuguese or in Spanish and what we are working a lot to have this connection and the de develop of the scientific research for our area. And to start saying about me, I was born in the state of Minas Gerais and since I was a child, I used, I love it, the nature and use the curved lines, maybe is very common for, uh, for Maria, for all of South America, this style, Hokoko style, and use the curved lines, nature teams, plants, rocks, cascades. There's a, a style that I really appreciate to use in my projects, and I love it. I really love the nature. This is a, a picture from my state, and everything is Hokoko style. Maybe it's common for some friends in South America. And today I would like to talk about fractized nature architecture. The word fractal was chosen by Bennett Melfrot to describe the irregular shapes of geometric objects studied by him. Then in the 70s, in his book called Fractides, Forma, Acaso e Dimensão, explained he had chosen the term fractal from the Latin adjective fractus. That means irregular or broken. Mathematics has been working since the beginning of the civilization to help to express the harmony and aesthetics in several human productions and several knowledge fields. The matter of the aesthetic elements is mathematics is said to be unquestionable and its importance to develop of the science in the instrument of diverse fields. We can see the fractals and everything uh, close to us and in us these wonderful connections with the nature and the biology of the human, we can see this in everything that we can see. Geometric, among other areas of mathematics, has aesthetic elements that force pleasure as else as harmony, the proportion of existing contracts in nature, art, and architecture which justify being objects of the study. According to the author, symmetry has a great aesthetic potential because it's individuals and objects and gives its personality and expression as the study of the golden ratio, the divine proportion, and other similar regular pent pentagonal polygons. Uh, the importance of the looking behind the physical Human needs to dwelling, building a project for the essence of the architecture, creating an environment which meets art and technique. The beauty as an expression of harmony and perfection has always been purchased by the human through the time. I think it's very important to think about the moment that we are have been facing a global pandemic for, of course, of all of the world. And I think it's very important to see um, 20th century neuroscience, robotics, culture maker, biotechnology, we're responsible for the exponential change in human mental processing. And there is a name for that, the fourth industrial revolution uh, make it by the convergence of suitable environments, exper experimental and digital technologies, merging with the biological, such as the nervous system. We are immersed in a revolution that will fundamentally transform the way that we live, the way that we study, the way that we work, 
and relate is each order of this, the environment affecting the job market, schools, company, hospital, and of course in our future. As the human being, we begin to value exclusively human resources and skills in capacity of being executed by machines, such an interim along cognitive flexibility, emphasizing creative. However, to understand and associate such practice, environments need to be adjusted to the needs of the new integral individual. All over, all over the world, education and a corporate project Review their architectural parliaments looking for this demand for the new Homo sapiens digital. We are in this moment looking for the experience. If I have a, a book <laughs> here, I would like to have the experience that's this more than the pro product, more than just the, 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 the paper. I would like to have positive experience using the environment, using the product. And this is the situation that we are have been facing with this, the change, everything, the foundation that we, we have. So this is the future. The future is now. When we explore the potential of the environment using the term and the concept of the fractized, the nature architecture. So I would like to introduce a project that I have been working with my partner in the office, the architecture Luis Bellini. As he is uh, from an uh, Italian family in Brazil. So we just uh, developed with him this project. The name is the Diamond House. The Diamond House, house is the connection between the interior to the exterior of the house connecting to the nature because this house is, is in the top of the condo close to the city of Belo Horizonte. What would you like to have in this connection? All the environments can receive light, nature, and all the, the environments, the bedroom, the kitchen. And so I using the fractals for the front of the house in all and very all the elements and all the different elements inside of the house. So the house is a circle, and as you can see, <laughs> the shape is a circle. And the diamond house was concepting using the, the, the concept of fractals and using the mathematics, the neuroscience, this connection between the nature. If I am inside of the house, I can see to the nature, to the glass in the front and inside of the house, I can see inside of the house. So I will show the picture that you can understand. This is the front of the house and this is a picture for all the architectures. <laughs> so you can see all the area of the house. There's a circle to enter in the house and everything in glass the connection between the biophilic design and how the environment can contribute for the wellness of the users of the house. How can I, when I project, I can um, have elements that contribute for the well-being, the positive experience using the environment. I think this is the talk of this project. When I learned the, the, the concept of the neurosciences, I use, you uh, very, I would like to use in my project, not just to talking about this concept. How can I contribute for the, my clients, for my students? How can I help them to have this connection and uh, to, to, to the environment, to the place? And you can see all the elements that I use it. So, the perception creating an experience that affect uh, human behavior. This is the interior of the house. So I had to use it different kind of materials. It's very common in Brazil to use nature materials uh, like marble and I use cement in all the walls, the house. 
and I work it together with the artist and drawing all the, the arts inside of the house. It's the same elements in the circuit that I use it um, to the design of the house. And you can see the, the front here uh, on the left and you can see it through, through glass. And I use it the color and all the elements of the house and I use uh, the mix between the, the wood, between the colors, between the light, the nature light inside of the environments. I use it the art cement, so you can see different elements that contribute for the well being of the users of the house. Now, here you can see more pictures inside of the house. And in this moment, uh, this one is the biophilic design because, because the swimming pool is in the middle of the project. So you can have this connection. We can see the sun we, because we, have, we live in Brazil. So we have the sun shining all day long. And I use it, this concept. And this picture here, this is the subject that abstract that I have been working in this moment between the architecture and the, the art and the toys. <laughs> so every time that I visit the house, I can see all the toys very close to the art. And you can see in this picture, there's a chair close in front of the art that they use it to stay and see all the, 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 the shape of the art. And in this moment, I have been studying uh, my subject and take data uh, to understand this connection, why they usually like to stay close to the art, to stay close to this place that I can have this connection to the nature. Why it's happened? I would like to have this connection in my study in this moment. So uh, in Brazil, we have been working to, uh, with a job and projects to the education because this is, we have been facing this moment. The Brazilian population is among of the most stress in the world. This is what is suffered by the International Stress Management Association points out. According to the organization, Brazil is the first country in the world with high, uh, high levels of stress. It is one of the data that warms the importance of debating the subject. According to the health to health mind study, students are living under stress, depression, anxiety with the case by the space they which they live, they work, and they study. Studies at Harvard show the participants that the better cognitive function and their worry environment will provide contact with the nature, as well as increasing on production of less stress. This is the picture that we can see in all of the world about the education. And I really appreciate the opportunity through the project to have this connection with the develop of uh, cognitive functions. So um, we have uh, received for the industrial revolution, this kind of teaching and uh, education. And we will start to, to study and develop how can I contribute for the education? Uh, I usually say the education for the future. So I started to, to draw some school and develop with my office, with my team, some uh, jobs according to education. This is a project that I'm working and the, the name of this school is NAVI. And you can see all the curves here, all the shape and uh, enter the nature life in all of the environments. I can open the class and enter in a park. I don't use it the one, one environment to teach for the students. I use it the build, the construction, like a third professor 
and using all the elements of the environment to contribute for the, the develop or the building the wisdom of the students. I think, I think it's very more than just to see or to feel the environment, is how can I contribute with my project to the develop of the education, the knowledge. So I use the term of the concept of fractize for this project too, using a different uh, elements, regular shapes and all the environments of this, this project. Because this project was developed for children in vulnerability. So I really think the power of the education that I, through the, the project, I can contribute for the, the children that have, uh, for example, like a broken heart, they doesn't have parents or they have been taking care for the grandmother. And uh, we work in a place that they feel nice and I can contribute for the behavior of them. So we will start to, uh, to use cognitive sciences and experience in architecture to contribute for this. And this one is in the auditorium and the, there's an acoustic project for all of the auditorium. Uh, the conception of the environment was developed for the sensory characteristics of the environment as use of the sounds, the smell, textures, shapes, considering how the aspect could interface on the way they will relate, generation wellness and stress release. You can see a acoustic project in all the walls because this project was concept in a residential area. So I used the acoustic project for all the environments of the school and for the auditorium. This is an auditorium for uh, 500 children's, uh, children, and I used the concept of using colors, asymmetric shapes, and this is for, for music class. This is what your auditorium was. And inside of the restrooms, I use the shape, and the colors, the fractals, and all the elements of the, the school. Children are born uh, in a technology and have attention, de attention deficit. For this reason, environments need to awaken creativity in providing experience, a nice experience, and our positive experience using the, the, the environment. So all the, 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 the space can connect to the nature. And I think it's so important in this moment because the children that are using this environment are six, five and six years. So in this moment, it is important to show them this possibility to the nature because they are, they are a indoor generation, staying a long time in front of technology so how important to show them this possibility to have this connection for all of their lives and how important to have the sun and have a park to play. And I think it's very important in this moment, this uh, six and five years old, it's a moment of foundation. And through the, the connection to the architecture, I can give them this wonderful possibility they have been for all of their lives. The sensory richness obtained through the use of the textures, colors, shapes, other stimulus, the learning and the memorization process, helping them to build in the education, the wisdom, uh, using the concept of the neuroscience inside of the environments. Colors, geometric contracts, material diversity, asymmetrical lines, volumetry, plastic, make a change set to motivate the children to be acknowledged knowledge and have access to education of the future that the architecture can contribute for this education and 
Uh, now here you can see through the neurosciences concept, the biophilic design, the project now was focused on nature life in the rooms, which opened to small parks at the building sites. Behavior five senses are evolved by the interaction of the space developing skills. And to finish, <laughs> I would like a student uh, can help me reading the sentence. I already know a student here. His name is Mario. <laughs> I can see in the video, <laughs> in the last video. Mario, are you here? Are you here, Mario? Could you read for me? <laughs> I think Mario is not with us today, but but Eustus, <laughs> Eustus, can you read? Can you help Daniela read? Yes, sure. So just read the the quote, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> Immemorable experiences of architecture, space, material, or subject in time merge in a unique dimension in the basic substance of life, which penetrates into our cons con uh, consens consens. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we identify ourselves with the space, this place, this moment, and these dimensions become ingredients of our own existence. Architecture is the art that recon reconciles us to the world, and the meditation happens through the senses. Johani Palasma. Thank you, Eustace. <laughs> okay. If you want to know about my job, you can follow me in my Instagram, Danielle Bellini Architecture, and through the Institute Hub. And now I would like to introduce my partner, the architecture Renata Ferreira. And Renata, let's go. Hi. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daniele. <laughs> Daniele, I think you need to stop sharing your yes. screen. Yes, okay. Thank you. Renata, go ahead. Okay. Hi, uh, I'm Renata Ferreira. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I will speak in Portuguese and Luciana will uh, translate for me. Ok? Ok, Renata, thank you. <risos> Obrigada. <risos> é... É, eu acredito que o bom projeto escolar é aquele que articula todos os elementos que compõem a escola, que integra salas de aula de forma flexível, incluindo o lazer, a cidadania, a sustentabilidade, influenciando o comportamento social e psicológico das crianças, combatendo a monotonia de aprender. O meu escritório, Renata Ferreira Arquitetura, ele é especialista em arquitetura escolar. Então, nós vamos falar um pouco como a neurociência, né, em, através da arquitetura, pode auxiliar os processos de aprendizagem. So... Um, Renata's architecture office uh, believes that uh, neuroscience can help the projects, the school projects, um, in the learning process. As she said here, a good school project is the one with architecture uh, articulates all the elements that are part of the school. It's the one that integrates classrooms in a flexible way, including leisure, citizenship, sustainability, influence the social psychological behavior of the child fighting against the boredom of learning. É, então vamos falar sobre as contribuições da neurociência para as novas soluções de design e arquitetura no ambiente de aprendizagem. So, today the contribution of neurosciences for the new solutions in designing, architecture, and learning in learning environments. 
é, Jason Silva diz que se você quer moldar mentes, forma espaços no qual, nos quais essas mentes habitam. And as Jason Silva says, if you want to mold minds, give shape to the spaces where these minds dwell. É, quando pensamos em escola, é, a gente tem relação com educação. E educação visa mudança de comportamento, que se dá através dos conhecimentos, de habilidades e de atitudes. Para isso, nesse processo de aprendizagem, é usado as estratégias pedagógicas que atuam como um conjunto de estímulos. So, when we think about school, also comes to mind education and as well, the behavior change that it can uh, cause through knowledge, skills and attitude, uh, taking into the pedagogic strategies um, based on a set of stimuli. E como isso acontece? É, nós recebemos o estímulo do ambiente por meio das nossas vias sensoriais. Atuam junto ao nervoso, fazendo com que esses processos, é, todos esses estímulos, é, gerem um comportamento adaptativo, modificando o nosso cérebro. Então, é, gerando neuroplasticidade. Então, so, quando uh, we receive um a stimuli, it goes through a sensorial path and that comes to a synapse consolidation that causes some change through neuroplasticity, generating neuroplasticity. Então, como que acontece esse processo da via sensorial? Nós recebemos o estímulo e esse estímulo ele passa pelo prolongamento do neurônio sensitivo, que faz sinapse com um neurônio que já está ali perto da coluna vertebral. E aí, através desse prolongamento, ele faz sinapse com o neurônio do tálamo, que, por sua vez, faz sinapse com o neurônio do córtex cerebral, e esse comunica com vários outros neurônios. É consolidando, assim essas sinapses, né, e gerando neuroplasticidade, que é uma mudança no cérebro. So, as you can see here, we use the pedagogic strategies that are transformed in stimuli, and when we have contact with this stimuli, um, through the length of sensitive neuron, they connect to the sensitive neuron, uh, making synapses, synapses, and connecting to the axon, the neuron from thalamus, the neuron from the cerebral cortex, creating or generating a, a change and consolidating the synapse. Então, é, esses neurônios é, ativados constantemente, eles vão se organizar de formas diferentes, né, criando novas redes neurais, ou melhorando aquelas redes neurais existentes, e isso gera modificações no nosso cérebro. So the, the, next, the connection between the neurons, they can create new neural nets, and uh, this can generate a reorganization in our brain. So this is caused by the neuroplasticity. Então, o processo de aprendizagem, ele nada mais é que uma reorganização do cérebro. So, the learning process is nothing else than a brain reorganization. O sistema nervoso do homem, ele se desenvolveu como respostas aos estímulos do ambiente garantindo assim a sua sobrevivência. Então, o ser humano, ele tem um comportamento adaptativo. É, ele aprende né, para a vida, para sobrevivência, para adaptação, para solucionar problemas. Por isso, a gente vê ao longo da história né, essa modificação 
né, esse crescimento, essa expansão do nosso córtex é, cerebral. So our nervous system uh, was developed through the interaction with the environment in terms of the need to survive then the human being needed to adapt and for this he needed to learn for life, for surviving, for adaptation. He needed to solve problems. So that's why we see all these changes and all these differences in the evolution. Um exemplo muito simples é dessa questão da sobrevivência é se eu saio de casa e começa a chover, eu me molho, da próxima vez que eu ver um relâmpago, eu vou ter o comportamento de sair e levar um guarda-chuva ou uma capa de chuva para me proteger. Né? Então, isso é um comportamento que foi gerado através dessa necessidade de sobrevivência. A very simple example is when I go into the rain, and get wet. The next time that I see lightning in the sky, I will take care to bring an umbrella or a raincoat because it was learned uh, to survive to the situation. It was learned based on a previous experience. E na escola? Aprender na escola não é tão natural, não é para sobrevivência. Por isso, não é tão fácil. So learning at school is not learning for survival. So that's why sometimes uh, learning from school, the information doesn't make much sense because it's not for the survival. Vamos à escola para receber informações. Mas hoje, é, por causa das tecnologias, nós é, não temos mais esse problema, né? O acesso às informações, elas são muito rápidas. E essas informações, elas podem se transformar em uma aprendizagem temporal ou em uma, uma aprendizagem para a vida toda. Mas pra, pra, como ela não é uma aprendizagem para sobrevivência tão natural, né? Ela depende de alguns esforços do nosso cérebro porque precisa gerar neuroplasticidade para que essa aprendizagem seja consolidada. Another point is that uh, in school we have access to information, but nowadays with technology information is not only acquired by school. We have access to that. So in the school we can have uh, the temporary learn or the learning for life. But the temporary learning, you learn and just forget, but learning for life, it's going to be meaningful as it generates a change, as we saw before, uh, relating to the neuroplasticity. So if there is a change in behavior, then it's, a learn, it's learned for life. So it's necessary some effort from the brain to do that. Então, é importante a gente conhecer os tipos de memória. It's very important to, to know the different kinds of memory. Nós temos a memória de curto prazo, que ela é esquecida ao longo do tempo. We have the short-term memory, which is forgotten through time. Mas através das nossas ações o nosso cérebro avalia o que, se aquilo é importante ou não, e essa memória de curto prazo ela pode ser transferida e se tornar uma memória de longo prazo. But what makes uh, what the information that comes from short-term memory to be transferred to long-term memory is the emotion, is the connection that we make to that information to that uh, stimuli. Nós temos a memória de trabalho, que é uma memória também temporal, ela fica gravada por muito pouco tempo e então ela se perde. We also have the work memory that is very short, 
and that can be lost in a very short time. Mas ela é a memória mais importante para no processo de aprendizagem. But it's the most important memory in the learning process. Por quê? Ela manipula as informações novas que eu estou recebendo. Mas Because ela it também manipulates uh, the new information, but also Mas ela também faz ligação com o conhecimento que eu já tenho armazenado ao longo do prazo. So, besides, uh, besides tracking what is important, it also connects to what I already have in our long-term memory, the knowledge pre-existing in our long-term memory. Porém, ela depende de uma atenção, uma atenção maior, um esforço mental, ela precisa de motivação que envolve as funções diárias parietais e pré-frontal para que ela seja transferida e se transforme numa memória de longo prazo. To do that, it's necessary attention, it's necessary uh, motivation to transform this stimuli and bring it to the long-term memory and generates the change and generates uh, the plus the to generate uh, the information into the long term memory então é, a aprendizagem ela tem tudo a ver com emoção e com motivação porque é através da emoção e da motivação que vai ativar as funções executivas controle inibitório e a flexibilidade mental gerando uma aprendizagem. So, emotion and motivation are the most important and related to emotion to cognition and motivation to action in order to activate the executive functions, the inhibitory control and the mental flexibility. Então a gente conclui que a aprendizagem ela está ligada a boas sensações. É a Learning is connected to good feelings, to motivation, to happiness, relaxation and pleasure. Então, boas sensações como alegria, descontração e prazer, ela vai ativar o sistema límbico que, de forma positiva, né, fazendo com que essas aprendizagens sejam consolidadas e o sistema cerebral de recompensa seja ativado, o que gera vontade de repetir aquela experiência. So, uh, this learning process through good feelings and uh, happiness activates the limbic system that is responsible to consolidate this experience, leading to... Uh, a desire to repeat the experience, to have it again. Aqui temos um esquema básico né, do circuito de recompensa do cérebro. Então, mostra aqui o, o córtex frontal, o núcleo acúmbis, né, essa área aqui tegmentar ventral, que fazem parte desse circuito de recompensa. Por exemplo, é, se eu a, é, associo uma aula a uma diversão, porque as crianças podem sair da sala de aula através de um escutador. Então, isso vai estar gerando uma boa experiência que vai consolidar mais facilmente essa aprendizagem, né? porque vai gerar o desejo de repetir aquela experiência. Então, se a criança pode associar o learning to plan Uh, it can generate a desire to repeat the, the action through uh, the reward sense. In this photo here, we have the exit of the classroom in a slider, and the kid can have it as a nice moment, as a leisure moment, and associated to what he was learning and wants to repeat it later. Então, se eu sei como as pessoas aprendem e eu sei que o ambiente construído pode impactar o nosso cérebro através dos estímulos que recebemos, 
nós vamos ter ferramentas para criar ambientes de ensino e aprendizagens mais potentes. So, as Renata said, if I know how people learn and how the built environment can impact our brain through stimuli that we receive, we have tools to create learning environments more powerful, uh, learning environments that contribute more for this moment, for uh, life, long life learning. Teoria de é, Eduardo Wilson, de 1984, já fala da tendência é, inata né, do homem em buscar conexão com a natureza. E vários estudos, né, é, revisões sistemáticas, é, outros tipos de revisões, têm sido feitas e comprovando o benefício do contato com a natureza também no ambiente é, escolar. Então... So... Here, Renata put some studies uh, relating to biophilia. And as Mr. Wilson said in 1984, that the human being have a tendency, uh, innate tendency to search for connections with nature. And uh, she also uh, mentions other studies where this relation is beneficial or it can foster learning. Então, baseado é, nesses estudos, é, nós usamos, né, é, no nosso projeto, o design biofílico, é, com a finalidade de reduzir o estresse do aluno, de melhorar os resultados de aprendizagem, de restaurar a atenção, melhorar a saúde, criatividade, cognição, criar senso de sustentabilidade, combater a fadiga mental com recuperação de estresse e desenvolver a criatividade e o relaxamento e a So, just to reinforce the objective of using biophilic design in the building of these learning spaces was to reduce the stress, to improve the learning results, restore attention, improve health, creative cognition, develop a sense of sustainability, find against mental tightness, um, recover stress, develop creativity, relaxation and excitement. Aqui nós temos o uso da vegetação, iluminação natural e ventilação também natural. So here there is the use of natural illumination and aero uh, vegetation. Aqui as áreas de circulação da escola. The circulation areas, yes. <laughs> okay, Tanat. Uh, are you? <laughs> A little problem here, but okay. Aqui nos banheiros, espaços de convivência, todos isso, né? O design biofílico. So the design, the biophilic design in all the spaces, in the uh, corridors, in the common spaces, in the restrooms. In spaces that uh, people can get together, in halls. E não só vegetação, mas outros elementos da natureza e cores suaves e formas arredondadas. So the use of natural elements and also round shapes and light colors. Então, é, de acordo é, com o livro, né, é, o terceiro professor, um ambiente rico em experiências sensoriais, ele ajuda o aluno a reter e recuperar o que ele aprendeu. Então, bases sensoriais, elas incentivam uma aprendizagem para toda a vida. Então, aqui nessa imagem, a gente vê diversos tipos de texturas e estímulos visuais, piso, parede e teto. So, different uh, sensorial bases help children to keep the learning for uh, life. 
And here you can see different types of texture, um, the floor with the different visual stimuli, wall and ceiling. Contribute for the children experience different senses and uh, take the best of this experience and learn for lifelong. É, outro ponto importante a ser considerado no ambiente escolar são as necessidades humanas básicas do ser humano. Porque se eu já vi que o nosso cérebro funciona à base da sobrevivência, ele busca recursos para a sobrevivência, então essas necessidades básicas, elas também são muito importantes dentro de um projeto. Então a gente usou, usa né, como é, base a pirâmide de necessidades desenvolvida por Abraham Maslow. So it's also used the Abraham Maslow pyramid of human basic human needs in the concept of the projects as the brain reacts to survival learning um, this is used also in the concept of the projects, the design of the projects. So the basic needs as a way to survive, as a way to learn and keep surviving. Então, é, dentro dessas necessidades básicas, a gente vê necessidade de, as necessidades fisiológicas, necessidade de segurança, necessidades sociais, de estima e de autorealização. So in the base of the, the pyramid, we have the physiological needs, then the safety needs, social needs, esteem uh, needs, and self-realization needs. Aqui a gente trabalhou relação público-privado, né? Esse espaço pessoal e esse safe space, que são lugares né, de acolhimento, de relaxamento. So it is also in different moments, in different spaces, this relation between public and private. Uh, it's also considered the personal space and the safety in this space. Então, espaços aconchegantes que podem ser utilizados também. So there are also cozy spaces that can be used for leisure, for relaxation, um, to enjoy the moment. É, espaços né, que incentivam é, a integração é, de serviços e práticas inclusivas, aprendizagem colaborativa, discussão em grupo e reflexão individual. So as Renata said, these spaces can also incentive integration and inclusive practice, collaborative practice, group discussion, and as well, individual reflection. É, estratégias pedagógicas que respeitam como o cérebro funciona. Né? Que a gente tem vários tipos de lousas, é, a aula pode ser dada também através de projeções, usando tecnologia né, e uma diversidade de mobiliário para que a pessoa, é, para que a criança escolha né, a forma como ela se sente mais confortável. Here there is the use of different pedagogic strategies that respect the way how the brain works. So through different boards, where you can write or project using technology. Uh, there is also the diversity of the furniture that makes possible different activities um, facing the experience of learning to be pleasurable and as a condition for keeping forever. É, usamos também é, aberturas generosas é, as quais a gente Ora, né, a luz natural e como o Brasil tem muito sol todos os dias, a gente usou é, persianas translúcidas que operam é, por uma célula é, solar. Né? Então, esse conforto luminoso ele é essencial também para a percepção visual e psicológica, para a orientação espacial, para a segurança física e a orientação no tempo. So, there is also this light and comfort 
As in Brazil, we have the divinity of uh, uh, sunlight most of the time. Uh, it was used the very large space openings that can see the light of the day and also the translucent blinds that you can have this contact with the outside. So this is essential to psychological and visual perception, space orientation, physical safety, and also a time orientation. Então, é, essa iluminação também é importante, né? Para o ritmo circadiano. This lightning is also important for the circadian rhythm. E o conforto acústico também. É, todos os ambientes recebe, é, receberam forro, né? Com tratamento acústico, que também é essencial para comunicação verbal, para atividades de transmissão. There is also this acoustic comfort that is essential for verbal communication, activities, relaxation, and cognition. All the environments, the learning environments, received this ceiling with uh, acoustic treatment. Todos os ambientes também receberam ar condicionado e possuem ventilação natural. Né, o que facilita a concentração, é, garante mais saúde, melhora o desempenho escolar, torna o momento de estudo mais prazeroso e é um item que cada vez mais tem sido exigido por pais e por alunos. There is also the thermic comfort that uh, is made through the use of air conditioning in all rooms, as well as natural air. So it facilitates the concentration, it assures more health, it improves the school results, makes studying more pleasurable. And it's also an item more demanded by teachers, parents, and students. É, brincar também é muito importante, né? Criança gosta de brincar e precisa brincar. E numerosos também provam que o movimento aumenta a tensão, bombardeando oxigênio e sangue fresco através do cérebro. Então, brincar também gera benefícios físicos e emocionais, além de melhorar a cognição. This play is also a very important activity, and there are several studies that prove movement increases attention, pumping oxygen and fresh blood through the brain improving the physical and emotional bringing uh, physical and emotional benefits and improving the cognition. So playing is also a way of learning. É, aqui eu deixei como referência um livro muito interessante e o autor fala que o corpo em movimento ele estimula a produção de proteína de DNF e ele descreve né, como uma é, miracle grow é, para o cérebro. Né? Ele alimenta o nascimento de novos neurônios. So this interaction with the environment to the different shapes, to the different colors, can also generate new neural uh, nets, the uh, create new uh, neural nets. And this is based on the book of John Howley. Uh, that Renata used it as a reference here. Então, é, durante as brincadeiras, a criança também ela está criando redes neurais, desenvolvendo suas bases psicomotoras, potencializando seu sistema sensorial e melhorando as suas habilidades auditivas e visuais. E, as you can see here in this picture, and during play, a child creates neural nets, developing psychomotor bases, potentializing its sensorial system and improving hearing and visual skills. A escola oferece ainda, né, é, ambientes que, aprend que as crianças podem aprender com a mão na massa. Então, fazer envolve todos os sentidos. Ativa, e a, essa ativação de vários neurônios ao mesmo tempo proporciona uma aprendizagem mais significativa, porque envolve todos os órgãos do sentido. 
So it, there are environments that also provide the hands-on learning that through experience, through making, through doing, you can uh, have all the senses involved, fostering a more meaningful learning in the learning for life. Então, é, alguns, é, um estudo também é desenvolvido pela Universidade de Toronto, é, onde eles mostravam, apresentavam imagens para as pessoas e convidavam elas a escolher entre objetos lineares ou arredondados, e elas preferiam o último. Né? Então, isso também mostra que a atração é, por objetos arredondados ela não é apenas uma questão de gosto pessoal, mas ela está é, conectada com a região do cérebro chamada de símbolo anterior do córtex. Por isso, as pessoas preferem né, essas formas mais arredondadas. So, this is study from Toronto University, where the people chose the round of shapes uh, to the linear ones is also related to the anterior similar part the, of the brain that shows not only a preference, but people feel more comfortable with these round shapes. Esse sistema, é, esse símbolo anterior do córtex, ele tem, é, ele apresenta funções cognitivas relacionadas à emoção, que a gente já viu que é importante para a questão da aprendizagem. In this anterior cingulate cortex mentioned, it's uh, directly related to two emotions, which, as we seen before, very important for the learning process. É, outro estudo mostra também que elementos pontiagudos ativam a amígdala cerebral. Então, isso processa, é, que processa o medo. Né? Então, essa é, premissa é a razão que no nosso projeto a gente, é, op, é, a gente explora muito né, os designs com linhas mais curvas. Então, aqui é o sistema límbico, né, aqui mostrando o giro do símbolo, o tálamo, e aqui o, o, o hipocampo. E aqui embaixo, né, pequenininha, está a amígdala, né? que tem essa função aí envolvida com as emoções. There is also another study that relates the sharp uh, shapes to the activation of the cerebral amygdala that is related to, to fear. And uh, to avoid this feeling, that's why our projects use much more the round shapes in our design to bring this comfort discomfort and avoid all these fear or um, denying feelings that uh, sharp things can cause. Aqui, né, as formas arredondadas que foram utilizadas em todo o, pro o projeto. You can see the round shapes all over the, the project. Aqui outra vez, né? É, até os espelhos, as curvas. So the safety and, and safety and comfort uh, everywhere. Aqui é, esse espaço também, né? Um espaço que para alunos e professores a usar o prédio de forma criativa, né? Explorando novas possibilidades para aprendizagem. So this space can contribute to new ways of learning in interaction uh, between teachers and students. A permeabilidade entre os ambientes, os elementos arquitetônicos coloridos e com movimento, usando, é, usados de forma a estimular também essa criatividade. So here there is a relation between the environments uh, with uh, the use of the different uh, experiences, also with the objective to foster creativity. Uh, 
trazer aqui é, novamente né, a, as fadas, ente rico em estímulo é, físico, cognitivo, sensorial e afetivo. Here are also spaces that you can see um, physical, emotional uh, stimuli and also safety. É aqui é, a correlação positiva entre aprendizagem e arquitetura né, é, e ambientes que envolve os alunos, fornece é, configurações significativas para uma nova prática educacional mais atraente e motivadora. So this positive relation among learning architecture and students can cause more engagement into the learning activity in having a better result for this experience. And as we saw before, taking it to a lifelong learning. É, espaços de laboratório para colocar o aprendizado em prática. There are also lab spaces to put uh, learning into practice. É, configurações. É, arranjos diferentes com o mesmo mobiliário. So there are also different uh, arrangement of the furniture to different uh, activities. É, ergonomia, né? E flexibilidade, novas possibilidades dos arranjos na sala de aula. So here also ergonomy and flexibility in the spaces. Eu vou, eu vou só passar, é, porque a gente já está, acho que já está em muito tempo, né? Sim, temos que avançar para agora. Então, just, just to showing a little bit quickly, because the time. Aqui, é, a interface, né, entre pertencimento, com o, cada um tem o seu armário individual. So the feeling of a belonging because each one has its individual locker. Aqui atividades incorporadas nas zonas de transição. So there are activities that are brought to the transition places, such as corridors and connections. É, o contato com a arte. There is a strict contact to art. E espaços é, que desenvolvem também as potencialidades motoras. Space that also contributes to motor development, motor coordination. E eu gostaria de finalizar com essa frase de Albert Einstein, né? Que ele fala que a lógica ele vai levar você de A a B, mas que a imaginação vai levar você para qualquer lugar. So just to close then, I would like to leave this Albert Einstein sentence that logic will take you from A to B, but imagination can take you any place. Essa escola foi inaugurada é, pouco antes da pandemia. A nossa intenção agora é gerar dados científicos que comprovem todas essas hipóteses que foram levantadas, né? É, em relação ao projeto. É, durante a pandemia, nós desenvolvemos um projeto de treinamento para professores. So, this school was inaugurated just before the pandemic, and uh, there was the idea to generate now data, enough data to prove all these concepts and all the uses of the design. And through the pandemic, it was possible to develop a methodology to train uh, teachers. That's called the iMinds. Eu estou aqui, é, viu, Renata? É, a professora Isis, ela faz parte desse trabalho, né, desse projeto de, é, de pesquisa com essa escola. E ela, não sei se dá tempo, ela falar uns cinco minutinhos sobre esse projeto, né, esse programa de treinamento. Ok, just, just five minutes, please, so that we can go for the conversation. Ok. É, 
Cumprimento a todos, sou a professora Isis, parte do Instituto Rava, responsável pela área acadêmica e pesquisa, sou neurocientista, pedagoga e psicanalista. Então, professora Isis, she is also part of the Instituto Rava, she is a um, neuroscientist, psychoanalyst, and she's responsible for all this neuroscience part of Rava Institute. O, é, pode passar, por favor, Renata? O programa MyMinds visava o treinamento prático teórico de todos os professores, gestores, coordenadores e diretores envolvidos na escola. So the MyMinds was a training that was responsible for all, uh, to train all the coordinators, supervisors, teachers, all the ones involved in the teaching process. Especialmente para que eles fossem assistidos uh, ao utilizar os novos espaços escolares. Especially in the way that they were assisted to use the new learning space, the new school space. Até porque nós sabemos que o, as áreas da neuroarquitetura da inteligência emocional e educação 4.0 são áreas novas do conhecimento. Because uh, we know that the emotional intelligence, the neuroarchitecture and the education 4.0 are new trends in the education. Pode passar o slide, por favor? É, nós criamos, eu como coordenadora pedagógica, juntamente com a arquiteta Renata e todos do Instituto Rava, uma plataforma de e-learning. Então, oh, professor Isis, as a pedagogic coordinator, and uh, all the others involved in the Rava Institute in Renata, created a plataforma for this training take place onde se disponibilizou de forma offline 36 mini vídeos e books teóricos e práticos e foi feita uma pesquisa de qualidade de vida, estresse, mindset desses professores. So it was available um, in this platform offline 36 uh, video class and uh, practical and theoretical e-books, and also it was made uh, a profile assessment of the quality of life and stress of these users, these teachers, these coordinators, these supervisors. E todos foram certificados após concluir o treinamento. And after concluding the training, there was a certificate for each one of them. Agora eu vou mostrar, é, Renata, descompartilha sua tela, por favor, que eu só vou mostrar um, uma, um acesso e já terminei, ok? Nós finalizamos. Eu vou compartilhar. Just going to show one more slide in, in Spanish. Apareceu? Uh, vemos uma imagem com água. Não, Renata, descompartilha sua tela, por favor. Você está sem microfone. Já deve funcionar, Isis. Tenta agora. Ok, obrigada. E agora? Sim. Ok, obrigada. É, nesse momento eu estou dentro da nossa plataforma, onde nós temos hoje mais de 600 pessoas que já passaram pelo treinamento. So she's also she's now inside the platform where there are more than 600 people that have been through this training. E apenas como exemplo e me já finalizo, né, a minha parte, vou apresentar rapidamente os nossos vídeos. Não parei de apresentar até agora. Maria está vendo? Sim, sim. Obrigada. Então, de forma breve, nós gravamos em estúdio. So the videos were recorded in a studio. É, os vídeos se complementam, 
onde o meu primeiro vídeo... Oh, perdão. No, sorry, the videos uh, complemented each other and the first video... É, sou eu falando sobre a organização do sistema nervoso. É, yeah, talking, the first one is her talking about the organization of the nervous system. Ah, no segundo vídeo, a Renata sobre a organização do ambiente. The second one is Renata talking about the environment organization. E no terceiro, a organização das emoções. Eles se complementam e eram lançados semanalmente. The last one is related to the emotional organization. They were released every week and they are uh, complementary to each other. Até completarmos 12 semanas de treinamento. Until finishes into 12 weeks of training. Obrigada pela atenção. Obrigada, Maria. Muito bom revê-la. Obrigada okay, a todos os presentes. Thank you very much. Ok, thank you. Thank you very much to Daniela and to Isis and Renata. And now we will uh, advance to our uh, conversation mode. Uh, and I have to collect and gather uh, all my thoughts because this was such a comprehensive uh, presentation or three uh, presentations and I think that neuroplasticity is definitely doing a lot of work <laughs> inside uh, inside my brain and uh, so thank you very much uh, so just to kind of try to round uh, because there were so many threads uh, through the, through all the conversation i would like to ask you for example if you could give for our students some tips on um, because in most of your projects you refer to the work with color what you can do with color and also with the fractal geometry and so on so if you could give some examples of which kinds of color uh, have a tendency to work uh, best or have different effects depending on, on what kind of learning activities you want to develop. So um, in terms of if you could give just a very practical overview, we have many of our students uh, are working directly with interior design and this could be uh, an interesting way just to give an introduction to what you can do, for example, with color. Renata, eu acho que é mais para você. Não sei se a Luciane vai traduzir para você. É, então, ela perguntou as tendências, né? É, falar sobre as cores. Isso. É, dicas práticas, Renata, sobre o uso das cores uh, para os alunos. Uh, como utilizar melhor as cores, não é isso, Maria? Sim, para o efeito. Uh, de, dependendo do efeito que quer criar, da, da, uh, do, do impacto cognitivo, o impacto cognitivo da cor uh, associado aos espaços. Sim. É, quer responder, Isis? Ou é que eu, eu posso responder. começar, eu posso é. começar. Tá, se quiser eu começo e aí você depois complementa. Com é, eu acho que eu vou começar e você complementa, tá. né? A questão das cores, eu acho que a gente tem que levar em consideração também a experiência de cada um. Mas é, existem estudos que comprovam que as cores que remetem à natureza, né, que lembram é, as cores primárias, elas são mais bem-vindas, né? elas são mais é, aceitáveis e elas geram é, mais bem-estar do que outros, outras cores. So it's necessary to consider when talking about colors, it's necessary to consider the individual experience. But there are studies that uh, uh, relate the uh, innate or natural colors to more uh, to better learning or to better emotions, better feelings. And feelings are important for the learning. É, tanto que na escola. Né? A gente usa os tons de azul, é, o verde, é, laranja, mas todos em tons mais pastéis. Porque se a gente utilizar também cores muito fortes, pode gerar uma certa agitação em determinadas crianças. Então, so, in the school projects, uh, it was used to the 
colors blue, green, orange, but in the light mode in, in order to establish this connection and avoiding the bright colors to prevent from the kids being very agitated or very excited. Isis, quer complementar? <laughs> É, de forma universal, nós temos já é, no nosso background cores de forma universal para toda a humanidade, como céu, azul, como verde na natureza, ou como vermelho, parecido com sangue humano. So, in, in a general way, in a universal way, we have some in our minds, some memories associated it to the colors, like the blue sky, the red for blood, uh, the green for nature. É, e por isso, nós temos também uma aprendizagem a partir de algumas cores. E com, dessa forma, a gente sabe hoje que as cores exercem enorme influência na nossa interpretação das situações e do ambiente. So, and we have learning through these colors, and uh, we know nowadays that these colors can influence in our learning and can influence in our experience in relation to this learning. É de fundamental importância aqui no Brasil, por exemplo, dentro da pedagogia e da educação, nós já abolimos o professor corrigir questões erradas com caneta vermelha e questões certas com caneta azul. Here in Brazil, for example, we don't use anymore the checking of errors with a, a red pen or a correct ones with a blue plan, pen. Apesar de sabermos que já temos de uma forma quase inata algumas aprendizagens de cores. Although we have already in innate uh, learning uh, related to some colors. Okay, this is, this is a very, uh, very interesting way to, to touch this subject of color because of course we also know that related to color there's all sorts of cultural factors and personal factors. And for example, I didn't know that in Brazil and now, as you, as you know, Isis gave the example with the red pen and the blue pen, and this is very funny because I, I remember in Portugal being educated in the same way. I had an elementary uh, te school teacher who was, a, so was a Catholic communist, so everything was pretty hard and that's a learning, learning environment and a lot of discipline. Uh, but actually, my associations of red are mostly positive, as you can see. In, in the background. But there's also the question of context, because I am absolutely sure that if I would be living in Brazil, I would probably not be able to live with the red wall because of the light intensity. Here in Germany, uh, I actually love to have my, my red wall exactly because it gives me a feeling of warmth, and especially in winter when everything looks very gray and we have months that we don't see a blue sky. And, and my red wall with the surrounding pink really gives me a very comforting feeling. But this, of course, is also completely a matter of personal taste. Uh, so I also find it interesting that you mention that, of course, in color, there are these universal patterns, but also there's always a subjective experience and personal, personal association, and also cultural things that we can connect to color. So, for example, as uh, Isis was saying, blue, we associate blue with water and with the sky. Um, and I had to think also of red. For me, red, for example, is the color of the theater and the opera and of the old museum, museum walls. So we can always expand. But I'm also pretty sure that if you would have red walls in a, in a learning environment for children, you would probably get children a little bit overexcited for a long time. Uh, I would also like to, like to say that I think it's especially interesting that uh, from all the presentations, and this is the last presentation of this uh, first cycle, this is the first presentation that showed real examples of buildings which were built already using these uh, principles. So these buildings are also experiments. 
So with the knowledge that you acquired, you really want to put to practice and to see if they work. So both Danielle and Renate, they mentioned that these built environments are also objects of study. So how do you do this study? Will you do it with questionnaires or do you follow and talk to the people who occupy these spaces? How, how will you do this evaluation? Okay. É... Então, posso responder, Renan? Pode? É... Nós estamos muito entusiasmadas com, toda... com todos os dados e com tudo que nós temos desenvolvido. Não sei se a Luciane vai traduzir. Fala inglês, Isis. Não, não tem We are, we are all very excited with all the data and uh, all the things that we have created. Uh, neste momento, nós estamos desenvolvendo um grande estudo de caso com uma das escolas, que é a escola que foi apresentada, onde nós iremos aplicar questionários. So, in this, uh, one of the schools that were presented, we are developing a large case study, uh, in which we are going to use some questionnaires validados e adequados transculturalmente para o Brasil, pois toda a construção, todo o projeto, ele veio a partir de dados científicos mundiais e não brasileiros. And it's important to, to point out that these questionnaires and these methods is going to be totally adapted to Brazilian context, as all the information we have is a universal one. Uh, se, uh, nosso primeiro, nossa primeira etapa é o estudo de caso da escola de Sete Lagoas, onde nós queremos entender se todos que estão ali compreendem o que é neurociências para arquitetura. The first one is uh, for school in Sete Lagoas, that the objective is to understand if everybody involved in the process can understand the neuroscience applied it to architecture. Em um segundo momento, quando tiver o retorno às aulas presenciais, nós iremos fazer uma pesquisa com os próprios estudantes, mensurando dados neurológicos, pressão arterial, dilatação de pupila, dados fisiológicos, diante desses então, ambientes construídos. So when the classes return to face-to-face -face interactions, we are going to assess all the students mixing um, physiological uh, signals as the uh, pupilla dilatation and also the pumping of the heart, the arterial pressure with the perception and the learning they have through, they have been through. E num terceiro momento, que é parte do meu PHD, nós estamos desenvolvendo um sistema de avaliação para o público brasileiro estudantil, onde nós iremos avaliar seis categorias de competências, habilidades do século XXI. E nós usaremos esse sistema para avaliar os estudantes que se formaram em ambientes projetados a partir de neurociências para arquitetura. So as part of her doctorate, uh, the third part of this study is going to be develop assessment um, assessment methodology Sura. that can yes that can get all the competences and the skills involved in the needs of 21st century. Uh, esses estudantes que se formaram dentro dessas escolas, comparado àqueles estudantes que não se formaram em escolas projetadas a partir da neurociência. So, it's going to be a comparative uh, study between students that didn't have access to neuroscience um, design in the schools and the ones that studied or had access to these neuroscience um, project the schools. Lembrando que os estudantes que não têm acesso serão estudantes da rede pública de educação brasileira. In the students that don't have access to these 
uh, schools, these new schools are from the public sector, the public education in Brazil. Okay, thank you. Uh, another another question I would have because you specifically mentioned that um, the children who will who will be um, learning in these schools they come from they have difficult backgrounds they are children in uh, vulnerability so in many ways you had to take take this in consideration also to understand the diversity of their needs and also to understand that maybe some of these children might might be uh, traumatized or, or might have already developmental uh, difficulties and so the space is also um, offer a variety of affordances so that uh, it's uh, encouraged that they can play with their with their fellow uh, colleagues but also that if they would like to be by themselves or alone or or taking their own time to connect to uh, to to the colleagues perhaps more slowly that this is also possible so you could you showed really in your project very detailed project of, of the school also an interesting i found a very interesting detail that Renate mentioned that each student has uh, her or his own compartment to put their belongings and this can also be um, important as a sign of um, i an individual a person with my place in the world where I can store my things uh, safely. So also fostering, as you mentioned, a kind of feeling of connection to the space and also as a kind of second home or, or a place for, for safety. This was also something that, that, uh, that I found very interesting uh, that, that you mentioned in your project. A uh, question that I have both for Daniele and Renata because Daniele also uh, showed a project which is uh, residential. And this is a question that, that I had to think because when we come from architecture school, um, even in, in different international contexts, we know that we are still following a lot of the aesthetic that we inherited from the masters of the modern movement. So in Brazil, you have the example of Nimaya, for example. Um, here we have, of course, Le Corbusier and, and Mies and so, so many others, or in USA, Frank, Frank Lloyd Wright, one could say. Um, and now in the, with this uh, data that you showed, uh, Renato showed this slide that shows a study that says uh, humans have a clear preference for the curved form. And I had to think about all these white boxes that we have been building for, for decades and even selling at extremely <laughs> high uh, prices. So what's going to happen to our aesthetic if we start to, now we are doing these experiments, uh, maybe we can, or we already know that the aesthetic is not perhaps on a very high, high level because we are all trying out things we don't know. Um, what do you expect that's going to happen to the aesthetic in the future? Le Corbusier had already an intuition. He was looking for something he called the scientific aesthetics. And you're somehow already trying to implement something like this. What is your prediction for the future? I think when I use the concept of the neuroscience for architectures in my projects, I'm not just giving the um, that are a piece that I can use in all of the projects. I think the most important when I project, when I use this concept, is to know is to know is to know about the user who will use this space, because when I project, I'm not projecting with. Uh, a nice picture when I see the Google. I'm not looking, I like this environment. So I will apply this concept to this, to this project. No, when I project, I need to know about who will use this environment. I will project for, for who? To, to the, the people use the, all the potential to help them with the well being, the connection with the nature, so important with the projects. I think we need to think about the who you use this environment. It's more important who you connect in this environment. I think uh, more than projects, more than concept, the more important things is to think how can I contribute for, for example, you to live um, the better way inside of the environment. How can I help you to, how to contribute for this? 
And we have been seeing in a lot of projects all around, the, around the world. It's the uh, connection that I use the project just to, to use in the beauty. It's not the, just the beauty because I'm a biologist. I'm a human being. I have my five cents. I can use all the potential of the environment to contribute for that when I project, when I develop my project. Renata, would you would you like to add something? É, eu acho que isso aumenta muito a responsabilidade, a nossa responsabilidade como arquitetos, né? Todos esses estudos eles valorizam o nosso trabalho, mas ele ao mesmo tempo nos dá uma responsabilidade muito grande, porque é, os arquitetos desde sempre projetaram com base é, na sua intuição. E, sem dúvida, temos obras maravilhosas em todo o mundo, né? obras de tirar o fôlego. Mas você projetar com uma consciência maior do que aquele espaço pode provocar nas pessoas, é, eu acho que muda, assim, é uma mudança de... Eu acho que é um marco na história, sabe? Assim, é uma mudança muito grande na área da arquitetura e para melhor. Né? É ter o, o, a pessoa né? como o ser humano no centro do projeto. Não o ser humano se adaptando ao projeto, mas o projeto feito de acordo a atender as necessidades desse ser humano. Oh. What Renata says is that all these studies bring a lot of responsibility for the architect as it in past was all the works were made intuitively and of course there are wonderful works but also changing this perspective not the human adapting to the space but the space being designed to adapt to the needs and to Uh, foster experiences for the person that's using that space. So in Renata's perception, it's much more a uh, responsibility that all these studies and concepts bring to the architectural work. More than intuition and before that generated great works can generate even greater work is now uh, providing the best for the person is going to use the space. Thank you. And I, I will be very curious in, in a few uh, years to ask you about the data, what you found out about these experiments and how and how the children and how the people reacted and if, if it actually works. But the, the intentions are uh, wonderful and I also dream about uh, schools and school systems that teach without fear and that let us develop all our our potential without without feeling restricted and actually most of all enjoying the learning experience and as you mentioned many times uh, to cultivate this idea of lifelong learning as something that we do from self-motivation because because learning is an enjoyable and also um, also um, um, an important experience for for oneself and of course for society and i would like to ask we don't have so many uh, guests in the audience anymore. We have Milton still with us and we have two of our students and of course uh, Jessica. So if you would like to make any questions, please go ahead. I think that Milton was the first to turn on the camera and to unmute, so please go ahead. <laughs> I just wanted to say I really enjoyed this talk quite a bit. Uh, the projects are fascinating. It's wonderful to see the thinking get applied and get beyond words into architecture. And I thought that was just uh, inspirational. I captured a few images I'm going to share with my teaching colleagues at Catholic University. Uh, I think they'll be very impressed. And also, I used to design a lot of schools. That was my career for the last 25 years as I taught. And I'm going to uh, make a connection to my old firm to see the talks. I think this is this is really terrific. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you also, Milton. Jessica, you also wanted to make a comment. 
Yeah, there's no questions, just to say congrats to the girls. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. I don't know if uh, David and Judith would like to make a question. No, may, maybe not. Okay, so we are uh, all exactly just just on time. I know that Michael Arbib had a question, but in the meantime, he had unfortunately he had to leave. So, but maybe maybe he will write you write you an email uh, with with some comments because he has been very active in our series. But he was very happy to be here today. I, I read his note. Uh, so again, thank you very much and congratulations for congratulations for this presentation. And I'm also really happy. Uh, to have two, uh, three colleagues here from Brazil and two who are architects who are building and also as women, we know that women in architecture very often, it's not so often that we see uh, women presenting uh, actual built work. So I am very happy and, and feel very proud to have your head here today. And thank you so much. And I wish you much further successes and uh, look forward to a next conversation where we can talk about the results and uh, your next uh, experiments. So, and this is the end of our first series. <laughs> Thank you everyone for being here and for supporting this project. <laughs> and we will be meeting around next semester and for the next, for the next rounds. Until then, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, thank you so much. <laughs>